something like four ingredients for what I thought I was going to meal prep this morning. This sheet pan blueberry pancakes without protein powder. Well, I don't have any of the, I thought I had everything. Turns out I don't. Uh, so I'm gonna make my own. I'm going to, I say meal prep, but not, I mean, I'm gonna do what I can. I have to throw dinner together. I just need to get my life back in order. I feel like I have been scrambling since Easter to like get my house back in order. Baby steps, you guys. You know what it is, all the after school activities? It's all just so time consuming. Avelina had her first softball game yesterday. Have you ever been to a softball game? <laughs> Needless to say, I enjoy many other sports more than softball. But it was interesting watching her play. But anyway, it's like all of that, it's so time consuming. So I haven't had the time to spend on like, I don't know, getting my life back in order. Like the laundry mountain is absurd right now. It says 20 ounces of Kodiak cake mix. Do I need to get my kitchen scale for this crap? You know, Instagram makes everything seem so, it's so simple. I mean, I guess it's simple if you meal plan and get the crap that you need for it. Oh, 20 ounces. Did I say grams? So I'm like, I don't know, behind on everything. The pile of dishes that we had after the holidays was so immense. It was Everest. Actually, I feel like last year it was worse. Wait, one cup is 170 grams. Oh, ounces. I saw you guys caught a fish. How long has it been? <laughs> what year is it? If I look slightly disheveled and have sand all over myself, well, that's just how you can tell I'm a mom. Okay, grams I think is where I ended off at. Oh crap, it zeroed out. I don't know what I had in here, so let's start over essentially. Oh my gosh, I went to set my oven and I remembered even my oven needs to be cleaned from the holidays because I put, I had like, food and then it was spilling and now every time I cook something the whole house goes up in smoke. What should we do here? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put the sheet pan pancakes in at 350 and then when they're finished cooking I'm gonna jack it up and do oven clean and that goes to like 550 or whatever. So it'll be basically halfway there when I'm ready to clean my oven and we'll deal with the smoke. It'll be fun. 20 ounces. I put it on grams again. Ah! Ounces. This would be easier if she just said two cups. Yeah. Okay, I am so serious. I'm gonna get some stuff done today that needs to be done. Oh my gosh. Most of the time I come home from the gym and I am so hungry. The baby obviously wants me slash needs me right away and I don't get to eat right away. So prepping breakfast I think will help me a lot. That's my homemade pancake mix recipe that I threw together a while ago and I'm just adding protein powder to it because that's what Kodiak Cakes does. I don't even have eggs in the house. In my mind, I'm like, is it worth it? Do I, like, do I really need to eat something? <laughs> Turns out I do have egg whites in the deep, dark depths of my outside fridge, but wouldn't you know it, these expired September 9th last year. Great. And since my free-loading chickens have yet to produce any eggs for me, I'm just going to use eggs. It says 32 ounces of eggs. Egg whites is what you're supposed to use. I'm using the whole egg. I'll let you know how many eggs that gets to. A three, a four, 32 ounces? Six eggs is 10 ounces. Fluid ounces. Okay, gee whiz. This is a little ridiculous. I'm gonna stop at 21 ounces because this just seems borderline crazy. And then, you guys, this day is not for me. 10.6 ounces of vanilla Greek yogurt, packed full of protein, way healthier than adding oil or anything like that. It's a good oil substitute. So it's supposed to be like those two of those like personal serving sizes. And I don't know if it means fluid ounces or weight ounces, but one cup got us 10.5 fluid ounces. So if you're doing it, this way. L listen, don't do it this way. <laughs> I'm gonna mix this up first and then add some blueberries. I say it every time, sure you got a big bowl. No need for any other liquid like water or milk. We got enough eggs in here. I don't know how many eggs I put in, but I feel like it was the perfect amount. It was one dozen. Okay, this is actually looking amazing. Gotta do a little taste test. Tastes incredible too. 
I love pancake batter. It's a little, little trivia about me if you're wondering. Now I'm going to add the blueberries and I have a little hack for you, okay? Are you ready for that? I don't think you're ready for this. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. To ensure that the blueberries don't fall to the bottom of the pan, here's a little trick. You're supposed to toss them in a little bit of flour. This way they'll just kind of exist amongst the batter. Obviously get a bowl or something, but I just, my counter is already needing to be wiped down, so watch they all fall to the bottom anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna add them. Just a cup of blueberries, that's it. Fold these beauties in. I sprayed a half baking sheet, whatever that means. It's supposed to be, I don't know, a certain size, but I'm just using, this is the only one that I have that isn't a monstrosity. I'm gonna throw the pancake batter in here and then cook it on 350 for about 30 minutes. This better be good. I can just eat the batter, honestly. All right, into the oven she blows. Turns out I am ill-prepared for my breakfast meal prep. I wanted to make this ham and cheese egg white breakfast casserole, macro-friendly foods, of course. I also, don't really shredded hash browns. I might have those. I don't think I do. And then more egg whites. It's because I didn't put it on my grocery list. It's whatever. Oh my gosh, I keep stepping on stuff. When there's crumbs everywhere. God. We just swept. But that's life with kids in and out all the time. It's constant. Speaking of, tonight's Brownie Friday. And I've been wanting to make these protein brownies for, I don't know, two years. And I just never have. <gasps> Peanut butter brownie trifle. I mean, come on. Cause it's brownie Friday, Friday. Nope, don't have anything for this either. Okay, 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 we pivot, we pivot. I wanted to make this one so badly that I printed it out twice. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there, when it's dessert time. I'm gonna start on dinner because it is a crock pot meal and I probably should have threw it together two hours ago. I can't believe I made it through Easter with one crock pot. I did borrow one of my neighbors, which was really helpful. Let's check on it. Hardly any smoke, we're good. If you wanna do this the proper way, take the loins. I'm making apple cider pulled pork, by the way. I don't think I said that. Take the loins and sear them on the stove top. It's just supposed to like lock in all the juices. I don't know about all that. Sometimes I do it if I have the forethought to do so, but that's basically still frozen. I also diced up an onion. I'm just gonna throw this on top of it. This was like the largest GMO onion. It's like four cups of onion going in. It calls for apple cider, which I didn't even know they sold outside of the fall season, but apparently they do. And this brand is the like little apple looking juice bottles, I guess I got for Wolfgang's fall birthday party. I don't really like apple cider, but actually maybe I do because that tastes really good. It doesn't have any spices. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Is this supposed to be like spicy? I don't know, whatever. One cup of this going in. A quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, which is like my nemesis. A little handful of brown sugar. And then some spices since there weren't any in the juice. I've got salt and pepper, a secret ingredient, some paprika. Adds a nice smokiness and then garlic powder. That smells really good. Low and slow is the way to go. Uh, I mean, kind of a rush, so mine has like a medium setting kind of. It actually has four settings. I don't know, it's whatever. Cook it as long as you need to until it's done. This pork was great by the way and the sheet pan pancakes came out of the oven. And wouldn't you know it, the blueberries did all fall to the bottom. <laughs> but it's okay, they were still good. Okay, so uh, don't use my hack. It sucks, I lie, I'm the worst. It doesn't do anything, it's not a hack. You can't believe anyone on the internet. I'm laughing, Elise has hers stacked three high. I just don't think hers is as thick. She probably had a small, like a larger pan maybe. So Eleanor, I mean, really all the kids were eating this, but Eleanor was like, can I have some more of that cake? <laughs> I was like, yeah, the protein pancakes. She's like, no, this tastes more like cake than pancakes, you know? So if you're a weary, they're delicious and hopefully protein packed, right? If you follow the actual recipe. I turned on the self-cleaning function in my oven and oh my gosh, my whole house is not full of smoke. I don't know, I can't really tell right now. I can barely breathe, I got smoke inhalation. I have the vent fan going, obviously not right now because it's so loud, but every, mm, I would say 30 seconds or so, my smoke detectors are going off. So it's gonna be a really fun four hours. Actually, it's not happening. Are we past that threshold? 
It's been on for 35 minutes already and it, the things have been ever since. So this is the longest we've gone not listening to it. I got the doors open, got the windows open, should have done this earlier this morning when it wasn't 80 degrees outside. Since I have some time, I'm gonna throw the coleslaw together. I'm making apple cider coleslaw. It, the flavors kind of meld and that just makes me happy whenever I find a main dish and a side dish that coincide like that. So let me show you what you need. This is a, wait, is that one bowl? See, I have a small bowl and a huge bowl and then the medium bowl I use for the pancakes should've used this one, but I didn't. This meal is so great for, you know, a variety of reasons, but one, you can do most of the work you know, in the morning or the lull of the day, if you will. And then I don't have to worry about it, you know? Oh, there it goes. Dinner time can be crazy, but it doesn't have to be. But like every night it is, so. I have a bag of coleslaw mix and then I might have to do a voiceover. There are literally like 20 smoke detectors in this house. And that one, I was like, that sounds kind of distant. Where is that coming from? In Wentworth's bedroom. <laughs> Which I get it, I guess it's kind of close to the kitchen, so better safe than sorry. One time when we first moved in, it was, of course, it always happens in the middle of the night, right? Middle of the night, every single smoke detector in the house was going off. I was like, what the heck is happening? We had just moved in, it was a couple weeks after we moved in. Turns, I don't, I don't even know, like how does that happen that every single battery goes up? They were all going off. I still don't understand it, still don't know what happened, but Alex, middle of the night with the, the ladder is like coming in, unscrewing every single one of them. I took the little one outside, it was so loud, the whole house. I was like, what are we getting ourselves into? Okay, back to the slaw. I am going to cut up some green onion. It's going to add such a nice, fresh flavor. And of course you can do the coleslaw mix if you wanna do like green cabbage and purple cabbage and carrots and whatever the heck else is in here. Great, another one. Apple cider vinegar, you know it's my favorite ingredient. It's a cure-all, did you know that? It cures everything, every ailment you may have. This is it, just, you know, a tablespoon a day or whatever they say. Throw some of that in. Also for sweetness, you know the perfect ingredients for a recipe, you need to hit all the taste buds. Okay, so we need like some kind of acid. So vinegar, sweetness, honey. We also, you know what, should I add lime to this? You know what I actually love? I made it last summer, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper, is the pineapple cilantro coleslaw. I could cry, that stuff was so good. Definitely going to make that again. Going to add some oil in here as well. And then some Dijon. I'm sure I should have mixed all of this separately and then whisked the you know wet ingredients together, but c'est la vie, such is my life. I'm going to mix this all together to combine and then let it set in the fridge for as long as possible. The day ahead, you go ahead and do this the day ahead. It'll probably taste better the next day. What is there, no mayonnaise in here? Usually there's like yogurt or something, let me look. All right, that's it. That's all she wrote, folks. There she wrote. I'm gonna throw some, I'm, honestly, I'm probably just gonna throw it in the fridge as it is. I got so much crap in the fridge. Doesn't matter if there's gonna be a top on this anyway, because I'm sure something else will be shoved right on top, so. So while the um, fire detectors, what are they called, smoke alarms were going off, I decided, well, maybe I should replenish my egg stash. So I'm just shoving all the eggs in here. I love this egg canister. It is triple high because triples is best. <laughs> it's three high. It stores so many eggs. And I love it because I don't have to like shove my hand in to like get an egg. It's just right there. So convenient. And uh, I was saying, what, your fridge doesn't look like this after you go grocery shopping? It, everything is packed in here. Nothing is organized. Well, if you know, my laundry mountain is basically an anthill. I was going to say a mohill. Mohill? What's that saying? Don't turn a mountain into a mohill. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Turning a mountain into a molehill. Mole? Nope, don't know the expression. Anyway, this has been taken care of. Amazing! So, I was going to do all the laundry in here. This has six minutes left and then I will fold that, transfer it over, throw a new load in. But I wanted to show you this really cool 
This is a really cool basket that I got. It's not this. I actually just looked all around the house for it. Okay, so I was at Target the other day and they have these baskets, which is amazing. So there are laundry baskets. I sort, this is how I sort the kids' clothes. You guys know. Anyway, I was there. They sold one this much longer. This much, am I in frame? This much. So I was like, oh my gosh, they only had one, so I bought it. Now I don't, one of the kids must have put it in their bedrooms, you know, with their clothes in it or whatever. I'm like, you know, sometimes these are overloaded with the kids' clothes and I'm like shoving them down and then they get wrinkled and it's just a whole big mess. Not that they really care, but like also I don't care. So it could be fine, but also there's more space in the cabinet to facilitate a larger basket. So I thought that would be cool. Also, it might really encourage me to clean out under here, which is precisely what I'm going to do because there's just a whole bunch of crap. I got a garbage can with actual garbage in it. I recently got this from the thrift store. I got batteries on the loose. Someone's gonna choke. I have this. I don't even know where this is supposed to live. Maybe there. Let's just put it here. Amazing. I'm gonna call HGTV. I'm a home decor expert. I got socks, I got garbage. You get the gist. A bunch of crap down here, clothes that I have to donate. Straight in the garage. I was about to turn some music on and you know the other day what I was listening to, it's just so good and I feel like I need to share the song with you because it just is so touching and sometimes, listen, sometimes when I listen to music I cry, uh, depending on obviously what the lyrics are, if it's touching enough. But also, sometimes I get goosebumps when I listen to music, and I thought that happened with everyone. Apparent, really? <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't. It only happens like 20% of people where they get goosebumps when they listen to music. So if you're one of those people, if you're really into songs, there's this song that I had Abelina listen to the other day because, you know, she's of that age where like, you turn mountains into mohills kind of thing and she doesn't want to miss out and all this stuff and she was talking about like oh i shouldn't have done that or i should have done this instead you know so that's why i said you live and you learn and you grow from the experiences that you have and it reminded me of this one gavin DeGraw song which is incredible such an underrated artist he's absolutely insane when it comes to lyrics and just vocally, like when he comes on in this song because he's featured on it, it's Brett Young and Gavin DeGraw. The song is called Chapters. If you're in for it, just listen to it. Oh my, I like happy cry when I listen to it, but also I feel like it could also hit other people in the feels of like a cry. Remind me to tell you about this because I think it's important. The lyrics in the song say something like, there are lessons learned, pages turned, lessons learned. I need my phone. Even just reading the lyrics, I'm finding myself starting to tear up. It's such a good jam. Okay. There's no perfect life. You can't hold back time, but you hold on tight. Open you might find. Every page you turn is a lesson learned. Ain't we all, ain't we all trying to get it right? These are the chapters of my life. And then Gavin DeGraw chimes in and his voice alone, his part is, truth is that we all got stories. Gotta fail on your way to glory. It takes time trying to get it right, but every future has a past. Right now I can hear God laughing. Guess he must have heard my plans and my oaths, thought it was a joke, gave me more than I could ask. It's so hard not to sing it. <laughs> and I wish I knew back then. Oh, there's no perfect life. Just like them I don't even know what you're talking about it's so good it's too good as a matter of fact I like I don't know when that song came out but it's just something that I you know I listen to Gavin DeGraw all the time so I've heard it it's got to be at least five years now so it's just something that I was thinking about and I played it for her and then I didn't realize I needed to play it for myself too <laughs> 
So if you're looking for a good song to listen to while you get some laundry folded today, look no further than the Gavin DeGraw. And then of course he's got other bangers out there. Hey, remember when my dryer was like not connected to the tube? Remember when I told you about that? Because the people who put the tube in, first of all, why? And second of all, they never connected it because apparently that's not their job. And also apparently their job is to not inform us of that fact. So we went, what, at least six, eight, 12 months with it not being, I don't even want to talk about it right now. I feel like I've talked about it in the past and I didn't want to talk about it then either. One time we were like, why the heck is our dryer now? Our house literally could have gone up in flames. Thanks. So we were trying to clean it out. We got the vacuum and we did all that and then we vacuumed out and we attached it, don't worry. But anyway, I found this. While we were cleaning it out, we found, wow, this is pretty difficult. Like we know there's stuff there, but we can't get to it. So at TJ Maxx, I found this doohickey and it's like expandable and bendable and all kinds of stuff. So this is supposed to be for the vent trap and the way that the brush is, I guess it's kind of like a bottle brush, not a bottle brush, but like kind of, I think they sell cleaning brushes like this. I mean, technically this is a cleaning brush, but I'm thinking of baby supplies and stuff. So if you have something like that around the house that could work, that's cool. We ended up using a hanger and I feel like that was kind of iffy. So I got that. I'm gonna shove that into the dryer before I put a new load in and see what kind of goodies I can come up with because ours was so cram packed because our thing wasn't attached that we ha were having trouble getting the thing in, the lint trap. Ain't we all just trying to get it right, right? That's all we're doing. We're just trying to get it right. Hey, speaking of, I finally washed these. I meant to do it before we had a ton of people over, but that didn't happen. Do you ever find yourself doing that where you're like, oh, I need to clean this. And then it like is so low on the list of priorities that it doesn't get done. And then a bunch of people come over and that's like all you can think about. Oh, I forgot to clean that. Everyone's probably looking at it when the reality is probably no one was looking at it. But after having literally hundreds of people at our house stomping all over this in the bathrooms, they were atrocious. <laughs> Tracking in dirt and stuff. So I'm glad I finally got these cleaned. And plus they're beige. Like who did I think I was buying like beige rugs? So I guess I'll put these down. Also tonight is Brownie Friday, Friday, and movie night. I don't know what movie we're gonna watch, but it better be a good one. All right, that looks better already. What is that? Time to get some actual folding of the laundry done. And of course I had to turn on chapters. It's just, it's too good. And what I did here, obviously I folded the load of laundry that was in the dryer, but I also went under the cabinets and stuff and took out all the crap that shouldn't be under there. And my plan is to get the bigger baskets and replenish the stash that I have. Slash, I like that I have multiple baskets. Well, I like that I will have multiple baskets for each child because a lot of the times they'll bring it in their bedroom and then it'll live there for a couple of days where I'm still needing a basket in the laundry room for them. And they're stackable, so it, they won't take up a lot of space if they're all in there at the same time. If a miraculous thing happens and I have all the baskets in the laundry at the same time. Empty. Which, let's be real, never going to happen. The lint trap, can you believe this is after like vacuuming it? Like deep clean vacuuming it from the behind and everything. So it's still got a lot out. And I was surprised at how much came out of there with that lint brush. So, oh my gosh. And then I was throwing another laundry in while I was throwing this in the dryer. And I saw all these white sheets, the, uh, the white tablecloths still from Easter. You guys, when I say I'm struggling to get along since Easter, like I'm, it's not a joke. Okay. But slowly I'm getting there. These were the tablecloths from, uh, you know, when we had a bunch of people over for Easter and there was one of Meredith's leggings in there and they were like bright red made me laugh uh thankfully it didn't dye anything because they are thrifted and they've been washed a million times okay I found oh I found this um almond joy <laughs> I saw a meme the other day it was like one time I ate an almond joy and broke out in hives and I said well I'm allergic I guess I'm allergic to almonds and then my dad said or maybe you're allergic to joy <laughs> uh, right on both both accounts anyway uh, ate the almond joy because obviously how could I not? It's the little things in life. It's not, like, I find chocolate everywhere. It's not my fault, especially after a holiday and Easter. I barely gave my kids any candy and still they're like every day, Hey, can I have this? I'm like, how do you still have candy? Like how are, you know, like, where are you finding this stuff? Mostly my fault because I do have a larger stash of it. And then I probably end up eating four times what they are eating. And I'm like, Oh, I shouldn't have bought this much, you know? 
But say la vie, you know what I mean? That show is blah, blah. This is the aftermath of socks, the bane of my existence. I've tried different things with socks, like getting each child one color or getting all the same color for what it just hasn't worked out for me, which, you know, is fine because really at the end of the day, socks is not that big of a deal when you think about it, because my kids most of the time have different size feet. Like Eleanor and Wentworth, their feet are similar in size, but they wear different socks. Boy, girl, like I can tell easily the difference. I'm shoving all the stuff like up top. <laughs> like I, I don't know what to do with it. It's the stuff that I just shoved, you know, in the bottom that I didn't know what to do with. And I thought, well, what am I going to do with this? Some of the stuff I got rid of and some of the stuff I'm like, well, I don't, it just ended up at the top of my laundry room now. And there's a shelf on top of the cabinets of my laundry room just full of random stuff so it's been there for so long I'm still waiting for Ikea to come back in stock with their Pax wardrobe system so we can finish the new hallway closets and that'll give us so much more storage space for all the random stuff like the linens I just need a place to store the tablecloths and right now they're just on top of the laundry cabinets collecting dust I should either get a bin or, you know, they just, they need to be in a linen closet, really. And then the other stuff up there, I've got vacuum attachments. But ironically, every time I need an attachment for the vacuum, I can never find it. Even in the bin of attachments. So I'm thinking, I should just get rid of this bin of attachments because clearly these don't fit my vacuum. But for whatever reason, I hold on to them. It's like that box of wires that just you carry throughout your entire life, you know? We have gotten rid of several boxes of wires and still we have a box of wires. So, you know, I think that's just part of life. It's like you always have a bag full of grocery bags. You always have a bin full of wires and I've just come to accept it. And it's just part of your life, right? Oh my gosh, the outside of fridge. Here it is. When we were putting groceries away, we just shoved everything in here. No rhyme or reason. I just said, okay, these go in the outside fridge, which really like potatoes, onions. I know a lot of people store those at room temperature. I can't. They go bad within days. I'm not joking. I live in Florida. It's a humid climate. Even when we have the air conditioning going, they still go bad within a matter of days. The potatoes I'm talking about. Speaking of potatoes, they're growing so well in my garden, if you were wondering. Uh, sweet potatoes went bad in this fridge because, well, that happens sometimes out here. I just forget about stuff. But onions I know are always here. And I'm, I think I showed you that humongous GMO onion compared to a size of a normal onion. So bizarre. I keep the limes here, extra produce, potatoes. I store them all in the fridge. I feel like when you store onions in the fridge, when you go to cut them, they don't make your eyes tear up. Okay. Or as much. I store garlic in here. This is just like my bulk food. Hey, whenever I need something, I know most of the time it's here. Lemons, citrus stored here. I've always got cheese in here. Well, I say always, but sometimes because this was literally empty um, when, during Easter, because, because I needed to store food. <laughs> I'm like, why was it empty? Because I needed to store food in here. Sorry, my phone keeps going off. It's my life 360. Everyone's just in and out. Birthday parties and all that good stuff. Okay. Eggs. I always keep boiled eggs in here. I've got the sous vide bites. My kids really enjoy those. And it's just overflow food storage. So happy to have the, this food. And I don't have to go grocery shopping nearly as much because I have the space to store the cold things. And it's really nice. Actually, speaking of that corn, we should eat it because I find that the corn goes bad pretty quickly. And um, I have a recipe that I want to cook with it. Did you watch my meal plan and grocery haul? Be I'm asking, like, do you remember the recipe? Because I don't. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and look. Uh, but I'll probably make that today. Oh, my heck. And then this closet. Okay. Hey, don't judge me. Don't blame me. Love made me crazy. Uh, life makes me crazy. How about that? So this closet, remember when I redid it and put the pretty wallpaper up and I was like, this is it. This is going to be the best. Um, it clearly wasn't, it was the worst. It was something other than the best. I don't know what happened. One day, just the wallpaper started falling. And I just saw it and I said, well, that sucks. And closed the door and the next day, it was like all down. It made, makes me sad. The amount of money that I spent on this wallpaper. Can I return this? <laughs> Can I just, I threw it away, honestly. I didn't, like, if they ask, if I, 
I don't know what to do in a situation like this. Like, I put it up properly, right? It didn't look good, but I did it the right way, I want to say. It should last more than a couple of months. The amount of money that I spent, I don't know. I have a lot of feelings about it. I don't know what to do about it. I just know that I needed to clean this little closet out because it was driving me nuts every time I would walk in here to get a broom. I would just, oh, I can't even see the floor, right? So I had a laundry basket in there just full of random stuff. We were cleaning out the garage, I think, and had this laundry basket. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that just transports back and forth between inside and in in the garage. And so I'm sweeping, cleaning out. I can finally see the floor. It feels so good. I had a couple cleaning products in here, some grocery bags that needed to be put in the bins. But other than that, pretty simple stuff. Oh, and then I had those boxes to the left. You see, I put those in there, but... That is for our fridge repair. Whenever that guy wants to show up again in a couple months, like it's been in here, I feel like since the beginning of the year, but you say la vie, you know, we only do what we can and he'll be here eventually to fix our fridge. And between now and then I'll just have the stuff ready for him. Oh my gosh. And then I needed to tidy my pantry. This is just everyday life, like back and forth, randomly going one place to another. I know a lot of people put YouTube videos together that are super cultivated. Uh, Clearly, that is not me. (laughs) I just uh, let you follow me around and do what I'm actually doing that day. And this day, I was just tackling a bunch of random messes around my house. And this is something that I needed to get to. Obviously, I had just gone grocery shopping. So I had a lot of stuff just shoved in here that needed to be put away. Granola bars, Um, I get lentils, the kids' snacks in here, and uh, yeah, this is where all, this is all the bulk food storage we got going, and love this space, can't say enough good things about it, but also it's a lot to keep clean all the time, so it's a constant, like, oh, gotta go tidy this, oh, and um, this is like hoarding 101, I can't tell you the amount of times that I've moved this box. I thought in my head, I thought it was the zucchini spiraler for my KitchenAid. No, it was the cheese grater. And I lifted up the box. I was like, that's pretty light. It was an empty box. I was just keeping this empty box. Why? Somebody tell me. Because there's no reason. So I, um, you know, recycled that. But that is like hoarders. That's like the beginning of it, you know? So I'm just trying not to get to that stage. So I got rid of that box. No worries. And then the rest, I mean, it just looks so much better. And what did it take me? 10 minutes to tidy up? I came in here to look up a brownie recipe and I actually found a lemon sheet cake that looks really good. And then I found another cake recipe. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight for brownie Friday. Hopefully something delicious. But guess what came in the mail? Definitely not what I'm holding right now. It's the Magic Candle Company, the fragrance oils that I love. I always get the four pack. And then I always get a sale. I feel like they're always having a sale going on, whether it's like buy one, get one half off, or I think they had 20% off of everything at this point. I got my favorite scents because I realized I was out of so many. I got one new one. It's flying over orange groves. Okay, when I opened the bottle and sniffed it, you think like, oh, it's citrusy, it's orangey, whatever, no big deal. No, when you diffuse this, it's like the most, it's so amazing. I love it so much. And then this is quickly becoming a new favorite of mine, Tiki Terrace. I'm gonna line them up so you can see what I got. I use these more than anything I've ever bought, like more than candles, more than any other essential oil, whatever. So this is Flying Over Orange Groves, Tiki Terrace Haunted. These are my top scents, by the by. Banshee Flight, Pirate Life, and Polynesian. If you were to order four of them, those are the four that I would order. (laughs) <laughs> just put some flying over the orange groves in the diffuser because the oven still isn't done and it just it smells weird in here but now it smells weird plus a nice scent so still kind of weird i'm gonna look up a dinner a dessert recipe and then try to get that going before dinner so you'll see the dessert that i ended up picking and honestly i made the best choice So I am currently putting together a detox salad. And if that seems complicated, it's not. It's literally pineapple and cucumber. I saw that it's really good for your gut health. Oh, maybe a gut health salad. I don't know what it's called, actually. It doesn't matter. I'm just cutting up some fruit. And I read a study one time that was like, if you eat, or maybe we were watching a documentary, but 
essentially, I'll give you the gist of it. If you eat one extra fruit or vegetable a day, you'll live like years longer. I want to say 10 years. I don't, obviously, I clearly don't know the exact thing that I am referencing, but it's something along those lines. Like if you eat one more fruit or vegetable a day, and how hard is that? Eat one more apple and you will live 10 years longer. I mean, even if it's five years, even if it's one year longer, how can that hurt anything? Just eat something healthy. And it doesn't even mean like stop eating something junky. You can still eat the junk, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to rewatch that documentary or find out what I'm actually talking about. Let me do that. Oh, well, I can't find it. Just take my word for it, okay? I saw a bunch of things on Google where it was like, yeah, fruits and vegetables a day could significantly reduce your risk of heart attack, stroke, cancer, and early death, and, you know, a whole bunch of... It. Literally nothing bad about eating fruits or vegetables. Just pick one up and do it, okay? And I was making that gut-healthy salad. Apparently, it's really good. My kids love it. And I just, whatever I cut up, I always throw one of these things on the dinner table. If we're having lunch, I throw it out. It's like so nice to have pre-cut and ready to eat. And oh, here we go, making memories. I'm like 80% sure that I'm allergic to pineapple. I never knew it. I have been eating it forever. When I was pregnant with Eleanor, I literally ate a pineapple a day. But the past couple days when I've made that like detox, not detox, but gut healthy, it's pineapple and cucumber. I just had a piece and now my ears are itching. I feel like Will Smith and itch, hitch, where his ears are itching, his throat is scratchy, his eyes get swollen, he's like, I'm okay. And really he's like having a full blown allergic reaction. Um, anyway, I have decided to make my famous marshmallow brownies because it's a holiday recipe, but I feel like the past couple holidays, I've just been so busy, I haven't made them. They are a family favorite. It's tradition and I haven't done it, so I feel horrible about that. So what better time to make up a tradition than right the heck now? Oh yeah, I actually forgot that I'm allergic to pineapple. <laughs> I keep eating it, it's fine, it's whatever, I'll deal with it. Um, we are making my traditional brownies. Haven't made them, so pumped to do that. And like today is as good a day as any to make it special and to do something like why wait? Why wait? Liz McGuire style or what's her name? Hillary Duff style. Okay. And super simple recipe. I say simple. It has three different parts, but like just do what else are you doing? You know what I mean? Make memories. I elicited the children's help for this one mostly because they enjoy doing it. And the main reason I'm doing this is making this recipe rather than the box Ghirardelli mix that we have is because I ran out of oil. Oh, how does that happen? So add that to my grocery list. But this one just calls for butter. And I was like, okay, well, that's a sign. Okay. And what do you need for the recipe? Great question. Two cups of sugar, four eggs. Whip that together. Then on the stove, put two sticks of butter, four tablespoons cocoa powder once that's melted. And then bring it back to the mixer, which at that point you have added one and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon baking powder, and then add the chocolatey butter mixture into that. Whip it up and that is your brownie base. Pour that into, I mean, it says a sheet pan. You can do what you have. But I used a nine by 13 dish. It's what I always use and I love it. Perfect timing, time for brownies. The oven is fin, finit. Look at her shine. Am I supposed to wipe it down now that it's done? The thing is now it's like piping hot. I don't even want to touch it. Ooh, <laughs> it gets hot, it's wet and hot. As you can imagine. All right, well, cool, cool, cool. We'll get back to the brownies in a second, but how do you clean this up when it's done? Do you wait till it's cool and then wipe it down? I couldn't wait till it's cool because I needed the oven. So I wiped it down. It was literally piping hot. You can see the steam coming off. It's fine. I thought, well, this is better than nothing to wipe off what I can when I can. And then I'll get the rest later. I almost brought my vacuum in there, but didn't. Threw the brownies in. The dinner was done. The pulled pork was fantastic. It wasn't like the best thing I've ever had, but it was really good. It was like four out of five stars, okay? If sweet pulled pork is five stars, this was four. Back to the brownies. When they came out of the oven after dinner time, it was perfect timing, I threw a bag of marshmallows on while it's still, like right when you get it out of the oven, you throw this on, okay? So the marshmallows kind of halfway melt on there, but are still kind of lumpy and gooey and ooey and delicious. 
So there's a reason they're my favorite, okay? Hardly any nutritional value in this. If anything, it's negative nutritional value. So it's, it's all, life is all about balance and it's Brownie Friday, okay? Okay, for the top layer, two sticks of butter. Let that melt on the stove top. And then you add one quarter cup of cocoa powder. Mix that in and then add one third cup of milk. I think I use almond milk. You can use whatever milk you want. It doesn't matter. Just any of that. And then a little splash of vanilla and three and a half cups of powdered sugar. Mix that in. And I did it with a spatula and then realized, oh, it's kind of lumpy and clumpy. So I went in with the hand mixer. And this is like kind of a fudgy consistency. It's like a really thick frosting and at first you're probably going to think oh these are not going to spread over the brownies no stinking way but believe me when I tell you first of all they will and second of all be careful because these will be the best brownies you've ever had in your life it's this recipe and the Mississippi mud recipe that I love so much and then I think why do I only make this once a year to keep it special what's the point every day is special okay don't wait to make your special things. Just don't. Why not? Just make it now and enjoy it because you never know what tomorrow will bring, honestly. Okay? So mix it up. Beaters and all. You got to take a taste test. Wolfgang was there. I let him have a little lick too because YOLO. He's got to enjoy his life as well. Oh, pure sugar, pure enjoyment. And honestly, Alex was like, oh, you know, when the brownies came out, oh, we're taking a risk on these because the brownies came out. and I was like, oh, I don't know. Are they overcooked? Like it looks kind of cracked. And he's like, we're taking a risk. He likes the classic brownies. I like to mix it up a little bit. So I will say that he's a classic brownie kind of guy. And Meredith, too, like some people in my family would just rather have the Ghirardelli box brownie mix. No frills, no fuss. But for me, bring me all the frills, all the fuss, especially when it comes to brownies. And I'm there for it. This was movie night, Brownie Friday and movie night. They coincide and coexist. And um, I forgot we watched Aliens in the Attic. Surprisingly sentimental. Okay. And this is what they looked like. Of course, I used my brownie spatula to scoop this stuff out. And I mean, top 10 rated in my book. They're just so good. Just look at it. It might not look that good, but I promise it is. But that's it for today. Hope you had fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.